how this came about. I guess uh, I'm a trade union official and I spend a lot of time in workplaces, um, you know, blue collar workplaces, um, white collar workplaces, in a whole load of uh, different areas, mainly, mainly out west. And um, the level of uh, debate and discussion has been quite intense. I was involved um, in the uh, last federal election and I was really upset at the venom and um, nastiness uh, around issues like asylum seekers. I was actually quite taken aback. And actually during the election campaign, people that were working on the election campaign were calling particular seats, oh, that's a boat seat, or this one's a boat seat, or that one's a boat seat. And it really did, considering that you know the world has uh, huge pressing, pressing problems um, to address, it was quite, was quite shocking for me. Then I watched um, events unfold in France, Sarkozy, you know, uh, banned the burqa, it then expelled gypsies, uh, then attacked workers and pensioners in that order. And I didn't feel that that order was uh, a coincidence in any way. Um, so I just wanted to make it clear at the start, I am an atheist. I'm not here pushing any religious barrow. Uh, I do not support the burqa. Uh, I'm not in favour of the burqa. I do, and this is my personal opinion, and people in this room may disagree with me. I, I think it's an oppressive garment. However, I am vehemently opposed to banning the burqa. The, in real politics, I suppose the person who's been most responsible for pushing this has been Fred Nile, that well-known uh, campaigner for women's oppression. I mean, <laughs> this is a man that has spent most of his career trying to get control of Australian women's reproductive organs. Um, so and he doesn't have a lot of form in the women's liberation movement. Um, and, and I feel that he's, and even though he didn't get up his bill, I feel like uh, if there is a, a Liberal government elected next year in the state, well, if, um, when there is a Liberal government elected next year, that, that this bill may be presented again. And I think it's really important for progressive people to work out what they think about these issues. Because it's not an easy issue. It's not simplistic. It has lots and lots of shades because, you know, life's complex. And we have to balance a whole load of things when we make calls like that. So, in my view, I think that um, banning the burqa just creates um, Muslim women or a tiny percentage of Muslim women as objects of suspicion. And I think if you really care about women's oppression, then you'll reach your hand out um, in friendship and in community. And that's the way that we actually build a stronger community. Now, that's, uh, I just want to, uh, that's, so that's why uh, I called this meeting. And also I talked to lots of people, girls at the gym and people at the park and people at the shopping centre and everything. And people were saying, look, it shouldn't just be, these sort of debates shouldn't just be the preserve of Fred Nile and Alan Jones and, and, and all the nutters on late night radio and stuff. Like progressive people should be able to come together at a town hall and, and have a, a proper, intelligent, reasoned discussion around the many complex issues. Um, okay, now, a bit of housekeeping. I'm going to be the chairperson. I want this to be a reasoned, intelligent debate. I don't mind passion. I'm happy for people to be passionate. I will even on occasion put up with tired and emotional. What I will not tolerate is any name calling from either side of the debate, any shouting, any talking when you haven't been called to talk, or any talking over anyone. <laughs>